Hello, hello. How's everyone doing? Get a little bit of music underneath it. Someone requested this, so I thought I'd just do it finally. I'm finally done with my sim pit, so I might as well show everyone what I've been working on for the last 18 months. Quick explainer. Um, five years ago, I uh, broke my neck at work lifting a tripod. I ended up getting surgery. Surgery was not a success. I got nerve damage from the surgery, so uh, I have um, nerve damage down both my arms. That's why I wear these uh, super cool um, arthritis compression gloves when I fly. Super cool looking. Um, but yeah, so I had to basically retire at 41 from a neck injury, so had a lot of time, had a lifelong interest in flight, and uh, when Flight Sim came out, I started actually with this guy, a Logitech Extreme 3D Pro, probably the most basic joystick you can get, and it actually used it a decade ago and I went I first set it on my lap but then I got really sophisticated and I got a lap this thing so yeah. that's how I started and that was 18 months ago but then I got more and more obsessed and more and more into flight sim and more and more wanting realism so I started uh you know just getting more and more into stuff one of the first things I bought was the the quest 2 when VR started and that was great but I eventually ended up with the Reverb G2, uh, which I put a googly eye on, um, which is great. It's got a pretty narrow sweet spot, but it's great. And if you check on uh, Microsoft's store website, sometimes it's like in the mid 400. So I got it almost the same price as a Quest 2. Um, but yeah, I would recommend it. It's the, I guess, the moderate priced one right now. That's that's pretty good. So uh that's first. Uh, second thing, if you're in VR, I don't know if you could see them or not um, in my setup here, but yeah, here's one here and here's one here. Um, little fans help with uh, motion sickness in VR. You may or may not read that. It's kinesthesis, your body's positioning of itself in space. Uh, it, you know, the wind blowing on your skin helps your body know where it is in real space. So. Those help, and plus, in your if you're in VR, it actually kind of helps with the immersion a little bit to have some wind blowing on you for some reason. I don't know. Human brains aren't that smart, I think, is the main reason. Um, what else do we got? I'm just, I made sure I have everything. Oh, yeah. I uh, get super annoyed by external noise, and my kids play down here a lot. And I started with these, trying to, like, fit these over. And these are great headphones. They're the Razer... Um, I don't know, the good Razer ones. I can never remember what they're called. But these are the uh, Razer Hammerhead wireless ones. And I think you could probably get away with any Bluetooth headphone, but I, I picked those. They're gaming ones, so they have low latencies. So because I use a butt kicker and stuff, I wanted everything to be, like, no latency so it all matches up. Because if your sound from a Bluetooth is, like, you know, half a second off from your butt kicker, it's, like, it throws the whole thing off. So those have worked pretty good. I, the sound is a little bit hollow for me compared to like big nice headphones and the reverb headphones are actually great if you don't have external noise but i just have little kids um for controlled stuff uh let's see i say a lot um honeycomb alpha and bravo was the first thing i upgraded to uh can't recommend it enough they're solid as hell um one of the cooler things I got, though, with... I think there's a lot, lot been said, so you can figure out, but I love it. Um, a guy named uh, Pix, Mr. Pix, his website is Project Immersion. Um, I'm going to put links to everything in the, in the description, but he made this trim wheel. He made this little flap lever, and, and it's got actually... Uh-oh, where's my little box of details? It's right here. I keep everything close, but it, it comes with these detents and they're magnetized and stuff for this little case. Uh, and the, I think it goes, yeah, it's 10 to one. So you can, how many ever detents are in the plane, you can put it and it's got this little stopper. You just pull and it latches. So I have it in here right now for like, what was it? 
Oh, the GB3 with the smoke. It actually works for the smoke there. It's pretty cool. And then this little trim wheel is really nice. Okay. So that's the honeycomb. Um, I, at first I was mounting this stuff to a bunch of... Well, I still am using it. I have like a random desk here, random desk here, a weird glass table over here. But I finally got it. It's called the Murata Racing Steering Wheel Station. And it's okay. It's not really flight sim purpose built, but it's got a nice clamping platform and holes. And I've had to drill some of my own holes on the plate, which is kind of a pain in the ass. But the honeycomb clips really nice to it and rudder pedals fit perfectly under it. And it's really narrow, so I like it. Again, I'll put a link in the comments there um other thing i highly recommend i don't know if you can see it here's the remote for a buck kicker is here uh i have a i'll have a link for a software tutorial it's also sim shaker for aviators and uh, sim shaker wings or two pieces of software you should get for that and also a usb um sound card which i'll have a link to i should stop saying i'll have a link to it i think you got it at this point so after the butt kicker and everything, the other thing I got was this Thrustmaster Warhog set. I really liked the A10C Warhog and wanted to learn how to fly it. Needed a good stick and didn't necessarily need the throttle, but I uh, thought it'd be cool to learn how to fly the A10 with accurate controls. And these pretty much match the plane. Um, I also, from Pix uh, and Project Immersion, got he made this extender here. I don't know if you can see it. It's about 80 millimeters with a slight right-handed twist. And he saw that I was uh, disabled and had the neck injury and was holding my arm weird. And this is pretty much custom built to line up with my armrest. So it's like perfectly and I can set my arm. Uh, it's hard to keep my arm up for too long. So that works super nice. Um, I like the Warthog. I probably eventually, after I get sick of the flying the Warthog, I don't, I'm not that interested in jet. So I might sell this to and get a verbal stick because uh they've there are a lot of buttons and it's just i like verbal stuff this is verbal um and then this is just a vkb sim mount for that that i actually got this this and this used i would recommend if you want the warthog stuff this stuff has been around for long enough that you could probably find it used and i got these two for the price of like what one of them is selling for right now with um you know price gouging and crap so uh yeah that's the that's the warthog oh one of the interesting things and i found this on authenticate i don't know if you've seen the authenticate they make like spitfire controls that you can 3d print that are pretty much exactly accurate and stuff but uh got the wrong thing i don't want that same song playing over again uh Lost train my thought my train of thought. What was I talking about? What was that talking about again? Um uh oh, now I closed my tabs. Oh Authenticate. So Authenticate, I'll set put a ring, but this for a long time I took a, a computer monitor arm and had it clipped here to this table and I would kind of swing it under my leg and whatever, but I just figured out I took the monitor arm off and I actually pulled this arm off and I mounted it on here and then I have a C clamp on there but it's pretty good and then it just sits there and then um Pix's extender just screws off so when I'm done I just take that off and this swings away and I don't have to use it and if I use if I know I'm going to use the joystick for like helicopters or something for a lot this comes off super easy it's got that quick release plate so I just turn it around but yeah, that all works pretty great, actually. So I'll put a link to that monitor arm and how to do it. But it basically take one side of a monitor arm and put it on the other side. And I did have to drill my own screw holes and stuff into this plate. And I think I mounted, if I remember correctly, I mounted a plate to the monitor arm plate and then drilled screw holes in it. Took the warthog plate and then screwed into that. But it's it's pretty good, especially if you, you know, it works. And it's so much cheaper than like a lot of the chair mounts I've seen. It's like, I, I think it was like 40 bucks. I'll put a link in the description. And then I got this Verpal. Uh, I always get it wrong. VPC Sharka 50 control panel. So I got the stick. I was flying a lot of P51s and Spitfires. And I'm trying to do stick and throttle. Like this. Impossible, right? 
I got this. I also needed more. Uh, I also needed more buttons. So this thing is great. These a lot of these are three-way switches. These all you got four, so you can do like the P38 and I tell IL2. You can do with two there and just kind of do your mix, or like put both your like for that in IL2. I put throttle and mix or throttle and prop and then do mix. I think here. Um, so yeah, this thing is great and it's great for actually for helis. It's great for so many things because all of these buttons and I tried to cross map them between X planes, Microsoft Flight Simulator, IRL2, DCS. So some of it matches like gears is in the same place and flaps and stuff and I try to match it as much as I can. And I turn this off if I'm not flying jets and I use that for jets instead of, and this is like World War II or helis. This is jets pretty much exclusively with the stick. Um, and then I'll put a link to this. It's this is just the um, I think it's called JP. It's an Amazon mount. It's all right. It doesn't swing out like this. I actually have a Allen wrench propping it. Totally Jerry rigged. Um, and then the la very last. Well, actually, the Logitech um, rudder pedals. I had the TFRP rudder pedals from Thrustmaster never buy those they're the worst they have a, like a weird detent in the middle they're slippery so you're always no matter what your controls are shit with those it's you can't get it right it's the, the worst i hate them don't get them these logitech uh i think they're maybe even 30 bucks more and they're way better and then the last piece of kit i got is this is the k51 collective um it has verbal electronics but a, a guy named k51 from the dcs forums custom makes these uh it takes about uh, anywhere between two and three months because of shipping and construction and, and this wait list and it's just one guy doing it uh i love it though uh the one thing is it is 3d printed and these switches are a bit light but it all feels pretty solid um i i mean it's amazing how much more control you have in a helicopter with this than this though and it's because of this travel access i'll let me turn a little bit this travel axis is so long and then it's got the verbal electronics so it's so precise that you can really stick landings and stuff in helicopters and then yeah usb hubs i'll put some links to some other stuff but that's that's generally it so that was 18 months and again i started with the the logitech extreme 3d pro and then i, I got a t-flight hodus four or they call it a t-flight hodus x for xbox because i thought i was going to use it with my playstation but um, I used that for a while and it was okay, but that has no tension or anything in any access, which is um, not good for immersion in my opinion. So that's my whole sim pit. It took me about, yeah, 18 months to do. Always have a screwdriver and an Allen wrench nearby and a flathead screwdriver. You always need that kind of crap. Nope, that's about it. Thank you for watching a neon press on nails linger on the picture of her sister posing in a barn with a kid under each arm man behind her staring proud through the lens through the cloud to a comfort